Okay, I'll talk a little bit about Queen Anne's lace because this is a plant that's in tremendous abundance this year. It is just everywhere in just vast, vast amounts. Um, it is in the carrot family. It is actually wild carrot where, where our domestic carrot was made from. So you can eat it the first year. It's too woody and bitter to eat the second year. And would you eat the flower? You eat the roots, you know, because it is a carrot. I use the flower as medicine and not the roots. And it's considered an endocrine balancer in Southern folk medicine. So it could, it's good for the thyroid, it's good for type 2 diabetes, it's traditionally used for that. And, um, would you make a, make a tincture from the flowers or a tea? Uh, you can make a tea or a tincture from the flowers. They dry really easy, you know, and I've dried a bunch this year already. Um, it's um, also used for weight loss. You know, Tommy used to make tea, would tell people make tea out of Queen Anne's lace and keep it in their fridge and just drink, like he'd say, make a gallon at a time, keep it in your fridge, you know, and try to drink a, a quart a day, you know, so a gallon lasts you four days. And it moves a lot of fluid, is what it does. It didn't actually cause weight loss other than to, well, it does stifle the appetite, I will say that. So how much of the Queen Anne lace flour per the gallon? Uh, just a, you know a few heads, maybe five or six heads per gallon, and you know just a, a strong decoction. You know, like bring it to the boil, put the flour heads in, you know, and turn the heat off, and it you know will keep, of course, boiling for a minute or two, but and then just let it steep. Um, and do you add water to it? Like, would you do like a certain amount and then add water to it? Like and, you know, it, the water the should turn in the, the color of urine when it's ready. Five or six heads per gallon. A big heads. If they're little bitty heads, you know, you're going to need a whole lot more, right, depending on the size of the head. But the, uh, you can tell because it does color, the water turns the color of urine. So it's also a really good, strong kidney herb. Mm. And the oils and the flowers, I like them to be like a little like more closed so the seeds are forming because I think they're a little stronger when the seeds are forming because of the oils that, are, that start gathering around the seeds um, and you can taste it and it tastes like oily carrots mm. Queen Anne's lace flower mm. tea tastes like oily carrots when you get it just right mm. it'll flush the kidneys out really quickly in a heartbeat and when people lose weight it's the water weight they're losing well, as somebody said yesterday, they start close, they open, and then they close again. And they kind of change colors when they close again. So you can tell that you, they're getting little seeds forming in them. See, so when you touch them, you can't get there. And we have the legend here in the south about Queen Anne, who was put in the Tower of London, or putting a tower, you know, awaiting her death and she was making lace and she was weaving and, and so she pricked her finger and there was a drop of blood and that's why we call it Queen Anne's Lace. I had a student from England who came and I said, oh, you probably know this story and I told the story and she was like, I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I said, how can you not know this story? Everybody in the South knows this story. She was like, Nobody in England I know or believe knows that story. And it was That's like, oh my funny. God, well, take the story back to England <laughs> from whence it came. You know, it was, it was just really funny. And Bex was like, I never heard that story in her English accent. <laughs> it was like funny. Any questions on Queen Anne's lace? Yes. So the number one thing I've read mostly about it is it being used as an herbal contraceptive. That is a morning after. Yeah. And you can... Potentially, it can be used uh, to stop implantation. Mm -hmm. It does not cause abortion. Be aware of that. If it's implanted, it's fixed. Because here's my second question, follow-up question, is if you're drinking that, because uh, it's the seeds you take for or the morning I, after, but if you're, if you're drinking it and, like, taking it every day, mm -hmm. does that lessen the effect? I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. And you can just use the flowers as the morning after. If they're beginning to oh, form seeds, you don't have yeah, to gather the seeds. seeds. Okay. Yeah. I know that's the popular thing in, you know, herbal circles is you got to do the seeds. But, you know, I found that the green seeds will still in the flower top will work as well. But keep in mind, it's not a 
an abortive patient, it just stops implantation. Any contraindications? Well, if you were already pregnant, I wouldn't suggest it. You know, I don't, you know, it, because it is a uterine irritant. And that's how it stops implantation. So you don't want to irritate that either. And it is a diuretic, so you don't want to like, if you're pregnant, you don't want to kind of like lose this fluid. So I, it would be an herb that I wouldn't use during pregnancy. Yes. Anything with, <laughs> I just like Anything you with medicines? <laughs> huh? Any counter in, indication um, with any medicine? Well, a diuretic, you wouldn't want to have an additive effect with a diuretic medication. And it has a failure. very strong diuretic yeah. effect. Yeah, kidney failure, I would think. Yeah, kidney would. disease, mm -hmm. right. So what about working with like a water constitution? If they're like wanting to get... Just um, move some fluid, like yeah. monthly fluid, that could do it. Just for a few days. Help your watery muscles? Yeah. Yep. <laughs>